today I'm sharing 35 of the best high-end, budget-friendly Christmas DIYs I've created throughout this season. I'm also including several free printables that you can have. I'll leave a link to the free printables in my description box. Let's start creating. Our first project is to turn this Dollar Tree choppy mat into a beautiful custom Christmas sign surrounded by holiday botanicals. I created this Oh Come Let Us Adore Him printable. And yes, this is the free printable that I'm giving away to you. I'll leave a link in my description box so you can print it off and use it for your project. So I took my printable and I placed a few pieces of double-sided tape to the surface of my paper and placed the cutting board directly on top of the paper. Now there's a shiny side to the cutting mat and there's a dull side. I used the dull side because I didn't really want that reflection, but you could use the shiny side if you wanted that too. And what I did was I didn't place it directly in the center because a portion of this mat was going to be placed in the foam, so you weren't gonna be able to see it. So I placed the words in the upper two thirds of this cutting mat. I'm going to be tracing out my words with two different types of pen. The first one is a gold paint pen that I purchased at Michael's and the second is a copper pen that I got at the Dollar Tree. I chose the gold color to put on the top line. I carefully and slowly traced along the words, making sure that each letter was colored in well. I chose the copper pen for the word adore. Again, I colored in each letter carefully and made sure the letter was saturated in the copper paint. The more color, the better. We want it to stand out once we remove the paper printable. The last line I chose to do gold again. And then finally, for those berries on the side, I alternated, I did copper for the stem and gold for the berries. Now the paint dries really quickly, so I only ended up waiting five minutes before I removed the paper printable from the back. This is a great way to customize a sign without using a Cricut or a Silhouette. However, if you do have a cutting machine, you can still use this mat, cut out your vinyl lettering, and place that on instead. To hold my sign in place, I'm using a block of floral foam, and I'm going to be placing it on top of a square of styrofoam. I added a decent amount of hot glue to the bottom of the floral foam block, and I placed it in the center of the styrofoam square. Then I got a few floral pins, I added one pin to each of the sides, and now it is stuck in place and will hold my sign really nicely. I took a sharp knife and cut a line down the center of the floral foam, and then added my cutting board sign. I lined it up with the knife slit and shimmied it down into the floral foam. I placed the sign into a large wood tray, which adds extra detail, keeps all the florals contained, and also makes it easier to pick up and transport. Next, I covered the base of the foam in some really thin Christmas greenery, and I secured it to the foam with some floral pins. In my last video, I made a broken mirror Christmas tree. And to go along with that project, I decorated my Bombay chest with a beautiful garland full of copper and gold ornaments and bows. So I was really inspired by that garland. I loved it so much. I wanted to transfer those colors from the last video into this one. Plus, I had some leftover ribbon. So I used plenty of gold and cream poinsettias, some branches with gold berries, those beautiful copper and gold ribbons, which tie in the color scheme, and finally, some white snowflake ornaments. Isn't this display just so pretty? I put it on top of a sled, and I just love the way it looks. It's so high-end. Who knew that a cutting mat could be such a great blank backdrop to make a gorgeous Christmas sign? The next DIY is this Dollar Tree Christmas tree. We're gonna start off with this pot or the base. I'm gonna use two different sized bases. I have a larger one and then I have a smaller one. I'm going to be filling the space in between the bases with some shredded paper. I'm just gonna poke it right inside. I'm gonna press it all the way down to the bottom and I'm gonna add the paper around the entire perimeter of the vase 
in between that vacant space. Next, I'm going to be using some Dollar Tree ornaments for some extra embellishment. I took these ornaments and I pressed these snowflakes against the surface of the glass space and in front of the shredded paper. These white glittery snowflakes are pretty flimsy, so they were easily bendable, so they curved around the circular base nicely. I added four snowflakes, which was the perfect amount to fit my container. I added a small piece of floral foam to the inside base, and then I got a sharp knife and I cut out a circular hole in the center where the pole from the Christmas tree would be placed. I decided to do a little flocking to my Christmas tree, so I used this Rust-Oleum Gloss White Spray Paint and I lightly misted it over the surface of the Christmas tree. After it dried, I flipped it over and I lightly misted the other side and then I let it dry completely. I pressed my Christmas tree pole into the hole in the floral foam and it kept it securely in place. Now, when it comes to the branches on these Dollar Tree Christmas trees, I think it's pretty safe to say that they're pretty sparse. So I had to figure out a way to beef up this Christmas tree. So I got those poinsettias that I'd used in my floral arrangement and I added several of them to my Christmas tree branches. I put a copper and gold bow as the topper. I added a few large copper ornaments and a few branches of gold berries. I think you would be hard pressed to guess that this Christmas tree started out as a Dollar Tree Christmas tree and we beefed it up. We also took those Dollar Tree Christmas ornaments and we turned them into a beautiful holiday winter inspired embellishment that adds a beautiful detail to this potted Christmas tree. I love the way that this looks expensive and lush while keeping the cost at a minimum. Our final project is to turn this Dollar Tree snow globe into this gorgeous high-end looking snow globe. The first step is to take the bottom of this snow globe and paint it. I'm going to use some metallic brass spray paint. I sprayed an even coat until it was completely saturated in gold and then I let it dry. To jazz the snow globe up even more, I'm going to be adding a gold beaded garland that I got at Walmart for only $2. I added a line of hot glue to the base, placed my garland in the glue and wrapped it around the base. And I did two layers to completely cover the plastic base. The tree that I'm adding inside came from the Dollar Tree as well. I took that garland and some scissors and I snipped off a few of those little gold beads. I got some hot glue and I added them as ornaments to my tree. When I went to place my tree inside of my globe, it was too tall. So I needed to pull off the plastic snowbank. That's all right, didn't need it anyway. And then I took the wire that was sticking into the snowbank and I bent it and then I added some hot glue to the bottom and placed my tree right in the center of the base. The snow in my snow globe is actually just bath salts. I got these again at the Dollar Tree and I poured some bath salts into the dome portion of my globe and then twisted it onto the base. I did end up adding one more line of beaded garland because I wanted to cover up the threads where the dome portion and the base came together. So a total I have three lines of beaded garland. To make my snow globe more substantial, I'm going to be adding an additional base. I'm going to make this base out of a lid that I got off a can of empty spray paint. Talk about cheap, it was free. So I took that lid and I decided to spray paint it with that same gold brass Rust-Oleum spray paint. Once the paint had dried, I added some hot glue to the top and then placed my snow globe right on top in the center. To highlight my snow globe and make it a real focal point, I'm going to be adding it to this gorgeous apothecary jar. I'm going to add some bath salt snow to the base and then I'm going to place in my snow globe. 
I'm also going to be adding some mini gold ornaments around the base and a beautiful gold and copper bow to the top lid. I love the way that this jar really highlights the snow globe and makes it look so substantial and a standout focal point. Again, this project was so affordable and I think it turned out beautifully. Incorporating candlelight to the mantelscape from the firebox is a great way to continue that warm glow that the fireplace brings. I'm going to get a total of eight vases, four large and four medium. I took two large vases, flipped one over, added a generous amount of hot glue, and then pressed the vases firmly together for 10 seconds so they'd adhere well together. I repeated this process with the remaining vases. I wanted this to look like one continuous cylinder, so I needed to cover up the seam where I put the first vase on top of the second vase. I'm going to do that with some ribbon that I purchased at Michael's. I got several varieties. I took the widest gold ribbon first, hot glued the end of the ribbon, and wrapped it around the center. I added hot glue as I went, and then added a generous amount of hot glue to the end to make it stick well. Next, I took the thinner white ribbon, added the hot glue to the center of the gold ribbon, and wrapped the ribbon around the center. The third layer is a sparkly polka dot ribbon. Again, I added the hot glue to the ribbon and laid it around the center of the two underlying ribbons, hot gluing as I went. The final layer is this beaded garland that I purchased at Walmart. I took a segment of this garland, I put some hot glue on the end of the first bead, placed it in the center of my ribbons, and then just hot glued it to the center all the way around the perimeter of my candlestick, and then added a bit of hot glue to the end to make sure that everything stuck together. Now you could leave it without this center part. It's beautiful just as is, however, I like to go above and beyond, and so I'm going to add a centerpiece to the ribbons. I purchased these beautiful poinsettias at Michael's. They're white with a gorgeous gold sparkly tip. I'm going to pull the poinsettia off of the stem, and then I'm going to take the leaf and pull that off the stem as well. There's a plastic portion at the bottom of the leaf, and I'm gonna pull that off. That way the leaf can lay flat. I'm also taking some of this garland, and this is just Dollar Tree garland. I'm going to cut off about a five inch segment of it and curve it slightly. I hot glue the back of the garland segment and pressed it firmly to the center of my candlestick. Next, I took my flattened leaf, added hot glue to the back of the leaf and pressed it to the candlestick. And finally, I added a generous amount of hot glue to the back portion of my white and gold poinsettia and pressed it to the center. The final touch is to add a little sparkle. You've got to have a little sparkle, especially at Christmas time. I got these gold gem ornaments at Target for $3. I pushed my poinsettia through the center of the string ornament hanger so the gem would be able to hang securely from the poinsettia. I also added a sprig of gold berries for some dimension. I simply pressed them into the stem, into the garland, and it stayed in place. And then I repeated the exact same steps for the remaining three candlesticks. In the center of my vases, I'm going to be placing in some battery-operated flicker flame candles. This is key because that way I don't have to turn those candles on every single night. They will come on by themselves and I don't have to do a thing. I placed the taller candles on each end and the medium sized candlesticks towards the inside. These are gorgeous, don't you think? And I love how it looks like that candle is just magically hovering inside. I like a little magic at Christmas time, don't you? They were also extremely easy to make, and since we use those Dollar Tree bases, it's very affordable. If you don't have a fireplace mantle, these will look beautiful on a side table or as a centerpiece on your dining table. Let me tell you, trying to find some copper Christmas ornaments is not an easy task, so I ended up just making some of my own. 
The technique that I'm gonna use is called hydro dipping. This would be a perfect opportunity to bring in that color scheme of the copper, gold, and white into some ornaments. What I did was I took a container and I filled it up with some water, about three fourths of the way full. And then I selected my paints. I chose a rose copper Martha Stewart spray paint that I purchased at Michael's. And I also got a white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint. When you select your paint, make sure that it is an oil-based spray paint. That's not hard to do because most spray paints are oil-based. However, if it is water-based, it will dissolve into the water. So make sure that it is an oil-based spray paint. What I did was I alternated the colors in my water. I sprayed the paint for about three seconds and then switched to the other color of paint and sprayed it for an additional three seconds. This will create a bullseye. I continued to do this about 10 times. Then I took my ornament and dipped it into the paint and swirled it around. The paint will cling to the ornament as you gently roll it around in the paint. Since I created several ornaments, I did have to repeat the spray painting process once more so there would be an ample amount of paint for each ornament. I hung them from a wire wreath holder outside and let them dry completely, which took several hours. Talk about an easy, affordable way to get some custom pieces of Christmas decor. I love the marbled effect the hydro dipping added to these ornaments. They bring in the copper color and add a custom look to my garland. Speaking of garland, let's talk about how I put mine together. My personal preference is a big, thick, beefy garland. The thicker, the better. So I took two medium sized garlands and I intertwined them together to get one lush garland. I also took three strings of Christmas lights. Yes, three, I wanted it to shine bright. And I added those around the garland as well. To secure my garland to my mantle, I took some floral wire and I wrapped it around the garland and left a little loop at the top. And then I used three command hooks one on each side and then one in the center. And then I hooked that wire from the garland onto the command hook to keep it securely onto the mantle. I started out weaving some gold mesh ribbon around the garland. I simply wrapped it around. Next, I got a copper ribbon and wrapped that around the garland as well. I added some large poinsettias to the top sides and the center. I also added in some large feather ornaments that I made several years ago. I wanted to add some hanging elements to my garland. And as you saw before in my foyer table, I used some terrariums and some of those gold gems. I had some leftover terrariums and I knew that they would be perfect for this particular mantle design. Inside of my terrarium, I decided to add some snow. I used some Dollar Tree bath salts I love how this resembles coarse snow, plus it smells really good. Mine smells like vanilla. So not only does it look good, but it smells good. I put a candle in the center of the snow. It's a battery operated candle. Again, it will come on by itself every single night so I don't have to turn it on. And then to hang them, I got some fishing line. I threaded the fishing line through the top circle in the terrarium and then tied it into several knots. And on the opposite end, it is a little heavier, so I needed to secure it to the mantle really well. So I tied it to the command hooks that were on the back. That way it can hang and I don't worry about it falling off because it's too heavy. The second element is going to be some more of those gold gems that I got at Target. Again, I took that fishing line and I poked it through the hole in the top of the gem, tied it into a knot, and then on the opposite end, I tied the fishing line around an ornament hook. That way I can hang it at any location on my garland. At this point, I just began adding ornaments and more poinsettias and some pine cones, some pretty reflective crystals, and some gold berries. I am in love with the way that this garland turned out. It's such a statement piece in this room. 
The DIYs add a classy touch while keeping the costs down. One of my favorite things to do is to turn the lights off at night, sit on the couch and admire the glow. I think it's more impressive with the lights dimmed. The sparkles from the individual pieces shine and the flicker from the candles add movement and make this piece come alive. Clear plastic ornaments are a perfect neutral backdrop to customize the pieces of Christmas decor. I found a package of four clear plastic ornaments at Target in the dollar spot for only $3, which makes them less than the Dollar Tree. That's a pretty good deal. I also got some craft paint. I chose a white craft paint and a gold craft paint. Any craft paint will do. I got these at Michael's and you don't need anything fancy. So just get the most affordable one that you can find. It'll work for this project. I removed the metal cap from the ornament and I squeezed in about a tablespoon of white paint and then added the same amount of gold paint. I took a wooden skewer and swirled the paint around. Then I tilted the ornament and let the paint slowly side down the sides of the ornament. Now, I got a little impatient waiting for the paint to, to slide around. So I thought, you know what, maybe if I shake it, I can still get that same effect, but just do it quicker. So I got a tissue and I plugged up the top of the ornament and I shook it really hard. Shaking the ornament actually softened the edges so there wasn't a sharp defined line that divided the two colors, which gave me the marbled look I was trying to achieve. Once the entire ornament was coated in the paint, I flipped my ornament upside down and I placed it inside of a paper cup so that the excess paint could drain out. I continued the process of adding paint to each one of my ornaments. I swirled, twisted, and shook the paint and it came up with just these beautiful, unique swirls and the marbling effect. It was so pretty. And then once I was done shaking them all, I did tip them upside down into those paper cups so that the excess paint could drain out. I let the paint dry overnight without the cap replaced because I wanted it to dry fully before I put the caps back on. Aren't these so pretty? Can you see that marbled effect on there? Oh boy. Now you could leave them as is. These are just so pretty like this. I am going to add some embellishment to mine. Flip these around so you can see. I've got a snowflake on one and I have the word Noel on the other. I created these on my Cricut design space. I printed them off and then I just put them onto the front portion of my ornament. I did four of them, a couple snowflakes and a couple Christmas words. If you don't have a vinyl cutter, you can use some paint pens. If you remember a couple videos back, I took a cutting mat and I used some paint pens that I got at the Dollar Tree and Michaels and I created a beautiful sign. So if you wanted to add some extra embellishment, paint pens will do the job. After I let the paint dry completely overnight, I put those caps back on. Not only do these ornaments add a custom touch to my tablescape, but they would be an affordable gift for neighbors, family, or friends for Christmas. I love decorating with nativities for Christmas. It's important for me to have a Christ-centered Christmas. Now, having said that, nativities can get really expensive, especially large ones. So we're gonna play a little game. I got this nativity at my local thrift store. It is 16 inches tall, pristine, brand new condition. How much do you think I paid for it? Okay, do you have a price in your mind? Well, the grand total was $14.99, which is a fantastic deal. So I took this, snatched it right up, brought it home, and I really wanted it to be the focal point to my foyer table. The way I'm going to do that is I'm gonna get a rectangular piece of styrofoam. Now you can get these styrofoam pieces at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. I actually already had mine and I've used it for different projects. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna flip it over to the bottom side and I'll have a blank slate to work with. Now I'm going to add some arches to my display. 
I got these gold branches at Michael's. They were $9.99. However, on the day that I went, it was 40% off, so that brought the price down significantly. I took my branches and I trimmed them to the size that I wanted, and then I took the branches and I placed them in the back corners of my foam rectangle. I put one on one side and one on the other. Then I took those two branches and I kind of brought them together and I intertwined the branches so that they would stay in place. And it formed kind of a gothic arch that I really loved, pointed at the top, and it just really highlights the nativity that's going to be placed underneath to my foam rectangle. I'm also going to add some greenery. I bought this greenery at the Dollar Tree and I snipped it into about one foot long segments and I put it on my styrofoam rectangle with some floral pins. I also got a string of battery operated lights and I put those right over the top of the greenery and I secured them again to the floral foam with some of those floral pins. I also added some ribbons, some gold and copper ribbons. They are so pretty and it really brings in that color scheme that I'm going for. I have some gorgeous poinsettias in gold and cream. I added some Dollar Tree ornaments as well as a few gold berries, some pine cones and seed pods. Finally, I placed my nativity directly in the center of my scene. This was such an easy project. You could recreate this look with any size nativity, swap out my color scheme for yours, and you'd have an elegant Christmas display. Christmas is the time of year where you can decorate on a grand scale, and that's what I did when I created these massive topiaries. I started off with a foam ball. You can buy these at Michael's, Hobby Lobby, or even Walmart. They are large ones, and they can get a little pricey, but make sure that you use a coupon or go on a day where they're on sale, and you can bring the price down. To this topiary, I'm going to cover it in the Dollar Tree garland. I cut them into about one foot segments, and I attached them to the ball and secured them in place using the floral pins. We're gonna be using floral pins a lot in the making of these topiaries. Now you can buy floral pins at pretty much any store that has florals. You can get a bag, they're just a couple of dollars and they will really help out with this project. To my topiaries, I also added some copper bows. I created my bows and layered them on top of each other I pressed a floral pin into the center of the bow and then poked it into the styrofoam. I added a white poinsettia to the center of the bow. I simply poked it into the foam. Next, I added some gold ornaments. I purchased a variety of these ornaments at the Dollar Tree in different sheens and sparkles. And I should mention that all of the ornaments that I'm using in this project are plastic. I didn't want to use glass because if they by chance fall, I don't want to have glass shattered all over the place. So I would suggest using the plastic ornaments for these projects. So I took these plastic Dollar Tree ornaments and I put them onto a floral pin. I added three ornaments per pin and then I poked them into place. I also added some gold berries and a few pine cone picks. At this point, I just went to town with these decorations and covered the entire styrofoam ball. The extra glow that a twinkle light or some candlelight brings to a display is just magical, especially during this time of year. So I wanted to bring in some ambient lighting. And I'm going to do that with a few battery operated candles that I'm going to put inside of some Dollar Tree terrariums. To hang my terrariums, I'm going to use some fishing line. I threaded the fishing line through the topper and tied it into a knot. I tied the other end of the fishing line around a floral pin and then added the candle to the terrarium. I poked the floral pin into the styrofoam ball which held the terrarium in place. I added three terrariums per topiary. 
I had some leftover gold beaded garland I purchased at Walmart. I cut the garland into various lengths. Then I took a floral pin and I placed it in between the beads and then I pressed it right into the styrofoam ball for another beautiful hanging element. The final touch is to add some gold gem ornaments. I got these ornaments at Target. They were only $3. And again, I threaded the fishing line through the ornament, tied it into a knot, tied a floral pin on the opposite end of the fishing line, and then added the gold gems at differing heights in between the terrariums for some additional sparkle and detail. I placed my topiaries on top of some large, glass vases, which elevates these topiary balls and makes them grand. Now you could of course do this on a much smaller scale. You could get some Dollar Tree vases and some smaller styrofoam balls and make some small topiaries and put them on a tablescape. It would be very beautiful that way. You could also switch out my color scheme again for your color scheme. Oh, and for those of you that are nervous about these falling over, don't worry. I added some clear packing tape to the bottom of the vase and I taped it to the table so by chance somebody should knock into the table, the vases won't go toppling over. I've got you covered on that. Well, I am just thrilled with the way that this foyer table ended up looking. It has a grand, elegant feel while keeping the cost down. Make sure you check out those local thrift stores. You never know what you're gonna be able to find. Take some Dollar Tree items and transform them into beautiful accent pieces and take those inexpensive clear ornaments and transform them with a little craft paint into custom pieces of Christmas decor. I purchased four Christmas village houses at the Dollar Tree. They are a little too colorful for my color scheme, but that's an easy fix. I'm gonna get some white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint and paint them white. The bright paint on these houses was so vivid that it took me three coats of paint to fully cover it up. I spray painted them, let them dry for about 15 minutes and repeated the process for a total of three times and then let them dry completely. Adding a champagne accent to my houses with some champagne glitter that I purchased at Walmart. I'm adding the champagne glitter to my houses with some Mod Podge and a brush. I added the Mod Podge to the original areas that had snow on them. I painted on the Mod Podge and then sprinkled the glitter over the Mod Podge. I added a fair amount of glitter. I wanted the glitter to be dense with no Mod Podge showing through, so I added a lot of glitter. I also placed the Mod Podge in the places where the snow would collect naturally along the base of the houses and on the corners of the roof. Once all of my glitter was on my houses, I took a dry brush and I brushed away all of the excess glitter. After about an hour or so of dry time, I added the top layer of the Mod Podge. I added a liberal amount to make sure that the glitter was covered completely in the Mod Podge. Now remember, this stuff dries clear, so you can be really generous in the application of it. I let this Mod Podge dry overnight until it was completely dry. And let me tell you, look at this stuff. Like it's, it's on there. Like it's, it's on there really good. So you don't have to worry about glitter and sparkles and everything all over your table or anywhere else because the Mod Podge made that glitter stick really well to the houses. Now what a fun way to take some Dollar Tree items and recreate them into some beautiful pieces of decor that will fit into any color scheme. You could paint these whatever color you wanted. You could add whatever color glitter you wanted that would fit in with your specific color scheme. I took a battery operated candle and I placed it in the bottom and it adds such a beautiful warm glow to my tablescape. I'm going to create two smaller topiaries for my dining room table. I'm going to begin with a metal form. I purchased this at Hobby Lobby. They were red and I knew that some portion of the underlying form would show through, so I needed to paint them. I painted them with a gold brass Rust-Oleum spray paint. I did two coats of paint. After it was dried, I laid them down so I could get the underside as well. Once it was completely covered in the gold paint, I let it dry for an hour. 
Now I like statement pieces and on its own that topiary form was a little too small and I wanted to beef it up a little bit. And I'm gonna do that with a gold basket that I purchased at the Dollar Tree. I took my form and I placed it right on top of this gold basket. Then I got some floral wire and cut it into some segments and I secured the basket and the topiary together. I took that wire, I put it around each of the corners and I twisted it together. And then my form was much larger and it was securely put together. At this point, you could leave the topiary as is. It's a great size and it would sit flat on a tabletop or on a flat surface. I'm going to put mine on top of a gold urn. So in order to do that, I needed to get some floral foam because the bottom of my topiary form is larger than my urn, I needed to create a base. So I cut some floral foam, placed it underneath the bottom of the basket and adhered everything together with some floral pins and then placed it on top of the urn. It's time to turn it into a Christmas topiary tree. I'm going to do that with some Dollar Tree garland. I took the end of this garland and I wrapped it around the metal point at the top. I got some floral wire and I wrapped it around the point and the garland and then twisted the wire together to secure the garland to the form. Then this is just the easy part. All you're going to do is take that garland and just coil it around the form. I coiled it tightly and every other time it went around the form, I got a segment of that floral wire and I wrapped it around the form and also the garland and twisted it together to secure the garland to the form. I did this until the entire form was covered in the garland. Now we're adding the decorations. I love this part. It's like adding the hair, makeup, and jewelry to your decor. <laughs> so I'm going to be using some Dollar Tree ornaments, some tool, some mesh, some gold ribbons, and winter botanicals. I started off with this mesh first. I made a loop at the top and then I took that wire and I wrapped it around the mesh and attached it to the point at the top. And then I just coiled it around my topiary. And every time I got to a spot where I was going to attach it to the form, I made a loop. Wrapped that wire around it and then attached it to the form. Next, I did my ribbons the exact same way. I also did the tool. If you notice, just by adding the ribbons and the tool to this Christmas tree, it makes it so much fuller. So here's a tip. If you have a small Christmas tree or a Christmas tree that has sparse branches and you want it to look a lot fuller for a lot less money, all you need to do is get some ribbons and mesh and some tool and it really will add the volume that you're missing from your tree. And that's what it does here on these topiaries. So once my ribbons were on, I added all of those ornaments, the gold berries and the botanicals to finish off the look. Aren't these so pretty? And they were so easy to make too. Now, if you can't find a form like mine, you can use a small tomato cage or you can get some wire mesh and form it into a cone shape and that would work as well. It's free printable time. I have a set of free printables for each one of you. I was thinking about what I could put into my frames. We've all had kind of a tumultuous year and I really wanted to relay a message of hope. This line from the song, Oh Holy Night, struck me as the perfect thought to share. If you want these, they're yours. I will leave a link in my description box below so you can print them off at your home. I'm displaying my signs in two Dollar Tree clear plastic frameless frames. Now I wanted to jazz these up a little bit and add a little more festivity to them. So we're going to do that by first of all, getting out the drill. <laughs> I bet you didn't see that one coming. I'm taking my drill and I'm making a small hole in the upper corner of my frame, which will be the way that I attach my greenery and embellishments to the frame. I wanted a focal point in my greenery, so I got these Dollar Tree wood snowflakes. I also wanted to incorporate some more copper into my design, so I took some Martha Stewart Rose Copper Spray Paint. I purchased this paint at Michael's. I laid out my snowflakes and sprayed the top of the snowflake, let it dry for 20 minutes, flipped it over, and spray painted the other side. 
This paint has a glittery finish, which is a fitting touch to enhance my icy snowflakes. I laid out all of my design elements first. I took a segment of that Dollar Tree greenery and folded it into an L shape, then took a smaller segment of that garland, also folded it and placed it on top. Then I secured them together with a long eight inch piece of floral wire. It's better to have a longer piece than a shorter piece because you can always trim down the wire, but it's hard to add it back on. So I took this wire and I wrapped it around the garland. Next, I took my wood snowflake poked the wire through the hole in the snowflake and twisted it onto the garland. Then I folded a copper ribbon to create a bow. I placed it to the side of the snowflake. Next, I threaded on three gold ornaments. I took the excess wire hanging out the back, the wire holding everything together and poked it through the hole in the frame. Then I twisted the wire together to secure the corner embellishments to the frame. I repeated the process on the second frame. However, on this one, you can see I put the hole so I could put the embellishments on this side and on this side, I did it on the right-hand side. So I have one hole on the left-hand side, one hole on the right-hand side. You can put them on in whichever side you want, but that just is gonna work for my personal design. So I just continue to do the exact same thing that I did on the first frame. Once all my embellishments were on my second frame, I just simply took my free printable and slid it into the frame. This was so affordable to create. And again, you can customize it by just changing out the color of your ornaments and the color of your ribbons. And you can also change the saying if you don't particularly like this one, you can change it to whichever one you want. So here again is another really affordable but beautiful DIY. Now that all of our DIYs are complete, let's put them together and make a beautiful Christmas centerpiece. The first thing that I did was I got a faux fur runner and I placed it down the center of my table. Then I added a riser. On the riser, I have two large candlesticks and in the center, I created a beautiful pine cone centerpiece and added some twinkle lights, some ornaments, and some holly berries. To flank each side of my riser, I'm going to be adding those topiaries to add weight to each side and also symmetry. I weaved a garland around the larger design pieces. And in this garland, I added some twinkle lights, some ornaments, and some winter botanicals scattered throughout. In front of the topiaries, I'm going to be placing my cute little winter village houses. I put two on one side and two on the other. And finally, I'm placing my framed a thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices signs right directly in the center. Oh, and I also hung some snowflakes and some gold gems from the chandelier with some fishing line. These are the same gold gems that I use as a hanging element in my topiaries that I created for my foyer table. Since you can see the dining room from the foyer table, it's important to be able to connect the design elements. So bringing a few elements from my foyer table into my dining table, it makes those spaces coordinate really well. So don't forget that I have that free printable in the description box. I'll leave a link so you can print it off at home. There is a little Christmas corner in the back portion of my local thrift store where I found this three foot tall potted Christmas tree. And it was only $7.99. Yes, $7.99. It was a little worn, that is for sure, but that is a great price. So the first order of business is to take off the lights. Now these lights were bright and colorful, which is fun, but it's not going to go in with my color scheme. So I had to remove those. That was okay. My first grader snatched those right up and put them on her Christmas tree in the game room so they didn't go to waste. After that, I needed to scrub down the base, this base right here. It was filthy. Clearly, this was a tree that had been outside because there was some dirt on it. There was some leaves, a little bit of sand. We are here in Florida, so sand's to be expected. I got a damp cloth and I wiped it down really well and it was pretty gross. It was really dirty. 
So I scrubbed really hard to get it extremely clean. Then I took that same damp rag and I wiped down the branches, got all the dust and debris off of those as well. After I had fluffed the branches, it already looked 100% better. Let's address the pots. Now I love the raised detail that it has. However, this muddy brown color has got to be changed. Since it's Christmas time, we're gonna call it reindeer fur brown. Whatever color it is, whatever color we call it, it needs to be changed. So I wrapped the trunk in blue painter's tape and then added plastic bags around the branches to protect the tree. I'm using a white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint. I painted an even coat on the surface of the pot, let it dry for an hour and gave it another coat of paint and then let it dry completely. Essentially what I did was I created a base coat with this white spray paint. This reindeer fur brown was so dark and saturated that I wanted to make sure that it was completely covered before I added the top coat of paint. For this top coat of paint, I got this Perla metallic paint at Michael's. It was $10.99, however, I used a 40% off coupon, which brought the price down. I took a paintbrush and I painted on this pearl essence paint all around the raised details and made sure the paw was completely covered in the paint. Then I let it dry overnight. This pearl essence paint was the exact look that I was going for. It looks like satin ribbon. It has the right amount of sheen and adds elegance to my wintry themed display. Now the lights on this Christmas tree were pretty sparse. It was pre-lit, but there wasn't very many. So I added an extra string of white Christmas lights. I created a large bow with gold and polka dot ribbons and wired it to the top. I wrapped the tree in a gold ribbon, added some poinsettias, segments of beaded garland, ornaments, and gold gems. You guys talk about a transformation. Have you seen how much these trees go for at the store? They are so expensive. And for $7.99 and a little elbow grease, I couldn't be happier with the finished look. I have two lanterns on either side of my mirror and I wanted to dress them up. I decided to make some teardrop swags to hang behind and a little below my lanterns. I began with some garland that I purchased at Target. I cut three segments, a two foot long segment for the center and two one and a half foot segments for either side. I took a piece of floral wire and wrapped the tops of the three pieces of garland to secure them together. I found these gold and green magnolia stems at Michael's and I'm going to take them, flip them upside down, wrap the floral wire around the stems and then twist the wire around the garland. Then I cut two one foot long pieces of Dollar Tree garland and twisted them together. Then I took a segment of floral wire, wrapped it around the garland to secure it together. I created a large bow with a gold ribbon and a sparkly polka dot ribbon. These ribbons are the same ribbons that I used in my last video to wrap the center of my candlestick vases. Using the same ribbon will tie the mantelscape and this buffet display together. I added my bow to the top of the swag with the same floral wire that I've used previously. And then I placed a white poinsettia into the center. Then I got some fishing line and I poked it through the hole in a snowflake ornament and tied it around the top portion of the swag. To hang my swags to my lantern, I'm going to be using fishing line. I love using this stuff. It's almost invisible and it holds a fair amount of weight, so I use it all of the time. I tied this fishing line around the top portion of the swag and then looped it around my lantern and tied it into a knot. 
These swags are just what these lanterns needed to give them a festive look. I found a package of wood ornaments at the Dollar Tree. To transform them into an elegant ornament, I'm going to be adding some extra fine glitter to the top of the ornaments. I purchased this glitter at Michael's. To adhere the glitter to the ornament, I'm going to be adding a generous amount of Mod Podge and using a paintbrush. I painted on the Mod Podge onto the top of the snowflakes. Then I sprinkled the sparkles liberally on top of the Mod Podge. I gave them a little shake to smooth it all out. Then I flipped it over to the other side. I continued this process with all five of the snowflake ornaments and then let them dry for about an hour. To keep that glitter off your fingers and everything else, we're going to add a top layer of Mod Podge to these snowflakes. Again, I just got my paintbrush and I painted on a liberal amount of this Mod Podge to the top surface of these snowflakes. Remember that this stuff dries clear and all that will be left is the beautiful sparkles from the glitter. Look at how pretty those are. And again, you can completely customize these to fit into whatever color scheme that you have. You can change out the glitter or you could even paint them underneath. So again, this was an easy, affordable DIY. On my display, I have several nativities that I have collected over the years from different countries and as gifts. I placed them throughout the buffet on top of some twinkle lights and white cotton batting. I also added a few pieces inside of some large lanterns with hanging ornaments. I also have two framed cross stitches that my talented mother made for me. And of course, in the center, we have our thrifted tree, which adds the height and the elegance that this display needed. Just like the fireplace mantle, I think that this display is more impressive when the lights are dimmed. I love the way it glows and sparkles. It just has a magical feel. For today's project, I have braved seven years bad luck to show you how to make this broken mirror Christmas tree. And I think it was worth it. My inspiration for this piece came a while back when I was watching Rebecca Robeson on YouTube and she made a broken mirror Christmas tree and I absolutely loved it. And then a little later I was scrolling through Etsy for some design inspiration and I came across this broken mirror Christmas tree again. And it just reminded me how much I loved it in the first place. Now my inspiration piece, this one on Etsy, goes for $425. That's a lot, but don't worry because the shipping is free. But I think that we can do much better. And in fact, I know that we can because I made my broken mirror Christmas tree for $24. First, I needed to come up with a frame. I found a two foot wide by four foot tall piece of wood at Lowe's. It was a screaming deal. It was only $6.58. I loved the swirls in the grain and I really wanted to highlight those and so what I decided to do was to stain it in this Minwax pickled oak stain. That way it was still stained, it was a little more transparent and it would really highlight all the swirls in the grain. So I painted on the stain with a sponge brush across the entire surface of the wood. Then I removed the excess stain with a paper towel. I let the stain dry for several hours before flipping it over and I repeated the process on the other side. I painted the entire surface with this stain and then I wiped it down with a paper towel. 
I really love the way this almost transparent stain highlights the wood grain while still remaining a neutral backdrop so that the Christmas tree can take center stage. The next step was to add some trim to the perimeter of my board. This way it would create a frame effect. The trim that I'm using is left over from a previous project, so it's not gonna cost me any extra money. And the best part about this is that I get to break out my miter saw. I love getting this saw out. It makes me feel like a professional, like I'm super cool. So I got my saw out and at first I measured my trim to get the exact size that I needed for each of the four pieces of wood that would go on each side of the frame. Then I took my saw and I cut some 45 degree angles and I repeated this process until each piece of wood was cut to the correct size. I'm going to get a sponge brush and I'm going to liberally paint each piece of trim in the pickled oak stain. Then I'm gonna get a paper towel and wipe off any excess stain and then let the trim pieces dry completely. I added some liquid nails to the back of my trim and then I placed it firmly on the board and then let it dry for several hours. Even though we used some liquid nails on our trim, I'm gonna go back through with my nail gun and put a few finishing nails in through the back into the trim to secure it together. The final step was to fill in the corner edges with a little wood filler so there wouldn't be any gaps in the seams where the trim came together. All right, now that our base is completely finished and dried, it's time to move on to the fun part, and that is breaking the mirror. Now, I purchased this mirror at Walmart. It was only $6.44, and for the size, I think that that is a great deal. The next step is to take a thick contractor's garbage sack and place my mirror inside. Then I took a second bag and placed it over the top to double bag the mirror for extra safety precautions. All right, I'm gonna be using some safety goggles and then also I have some gloves with a really thick coating on it so they're not just plastic gloves. This will protect my hands just in case any rogue pieces of mirror go flying anywhere. And as you saw, I put my mirror into some industrial sized leaf kind of garden trash bags. They're really thick. So if there's any extra mirror, it will not come through these bags. And then I have a hammer. One other thing to remember is keep it on a hard flat surface. A table will maybe bounce around a little bit so on the ground it's gonna work really well for me. So here we go. Wish me luck. Hope this is a good idea. If you're having a hard time breaking the glass with this side, flip it around to the other side and that will work really well. Once I was finished breaking my mirror, I peeked inside the bag to make sure that the pieces were the size that I wanted. When I was satisfied, I took the mirror very carefully out of those lawn bags and then I placed it right back on top of the lawn bag. Now it's time to sort my mirror pieces. I took the back of a hammer and I pulled up the mirror pieces and then I began to sort them out individually by size. On the back side of this particular mirror was a thick piece of paper. So each individual piece of mirror had to be peeled away from the paper which was a little time consuming, but I think that it really prevented that mirror from splintering and shattering everywhere, kind of kept it together. So I was grateful for the paper. It didn't really bother me to pull that off. During this process, I did keep my thick gloves on and my safety goggles. I did a dry run of the placement of my mirrored pieces to create my Christmas tree shape before I permanently glued it to the wood frame. I simply laid out my various shapes on a large piece of cardboard until I got the design that I wanted. To transfer the pieces from my cardboard to the frame, I placed them right next to each other. I started at the top with the star. 
I continue to transfer the pieces of mirror from my poster board to my wood board until each piece was in the perfect spot to shape my Christmas tree. To the back of my mirrored pieces, I'm adding E6000. Now, I actually ended up using two full bottles of this E6000 because I really wanted those pieces to be stuck well to my board. The last thing you want are some mirrored pieces coming down on you after you have it hung up on your wall. So I wanted to make sure that they were stuck on there really well. So I added a liberal amount to the back of each of the mirrored pieces and I slowly and methodically worked my way down the tree until each piece had been glued in place. And then I let the glue dry for 24 hours. To the back of my frame, I'm adding some frame hooks that I got from an old picture frame that I wasn't using anymore. So again, this isn't gonna cost me any additional money. Once those hooks were on, I hung up my picture on the wall right above the Bombay chest in my office. That way I can enjoy it all season long. To add some more seasonal detail to my display, I decided to add some of these beautiful snowflakes. I hung them from the ceiling. What I did was I got some fishing line and I tied it to the snowflake and then I got a thumbtack and I wrapped the fishing line around the thumbtack and then I poked it into the ceiling at various heights. The flurry of snowflakes adds such a wintry feeling to my display. To the surface of my Bombay chest, I'm going to be adding a thick, lush garland filled with twinkly lights, copper and gold mesh bows, a variety of gold poinsettias, and plenty of stems of berries to make the garland look full and lush. In the center, I have this set of wood skis and the wood stain on these wood skis match perfectly with the wood stain that's on the board for my tree. And finally, I added some copper mercury glass candlesticks and my yarn cone Christmas trees that I made last year. So let's quickly go over the cost of our project. And like always, I'm gonna round because it's just easier to do math that way. So the wood was $6.50. The mirror was $6.50. The stain was $5 and the two tubes of E6000 was $6. I had everything else. So if you add all that together, it's $24. That is a savings of $401 over our inspiration piece. I am so thrilled with the way that this turned out. I'm actually disappointed that I didn't do this project earlier. But now I have a beautiful piece of seasonal decor that I can keep and display for years to come. And you guys, let's consider, I used my miter saw, my nail gun, a hammer, and was completely surrounded by shards of broken mirror this entire process. I didn't get one single scratch. Look, all of my fingers are still here. My eyeballs are intact. So I would have to say that breaking this mirror wasn't bad luck at all. We're gonna start off today by hydro dipping. If you don't know what hydro dipping is, it is the coolest technique. I have seen it done on pairs of shoes, on water bottles. I had this extra Dollar Tree vase and I thought I'm gonna give it a try on this vase and I love the way that it turned out. To begin, you're going to need a selection of paints. I chose a gray, white, and gold Rust-Oleum paint. When you select your spray paint, make sure that it is an oil-based spray paint and not water. The water-based spray paint will dissolve once it hits the water. After I selected my paints, I got a large bucket and I filled it almost to the top with lukewarm water. Because I am only coating the outside of my vase in paint, I placed a plastic bag and some painter's tape to the vase opening to block any water or paint from seeping inside the vase. Now it's time for the paint. This is such an easy process. All you need to do is spray the paint into the water. I alternated the colors to create a bullseye effect. I sprayed each can of paint for three seconds. I alternated paint multiple times so my final result would be a multicolored marble effect. Once I was satisfied with the paint, I swirled it around a little bit in the water 
and then I dipped my basin at a 45 degree angle into the bucket and swirled it around so the paint clung to the surface of my base. Now since I am turning my base into a candle holder, I did want some vacant spaces on my base so that the candlelight would shine through. So I didn't fully coat my base in the paint. Once I had the paint to where I was satisfied, I stirred the water with my hand to remove the excess paint to the sides and then I pulled out the vase. I let this dry for several hours. It actually took quite a while because it was wet and you don't really want to touch it otherwise you're going to get fingerprints in it. But once it was dry, I was just so happy with it. It has a simple marbling effect that looks so classy and elegant. I'm going to place a battery operated candle inside and then I'm going to place it inside of a large blue lantern. The cost to create this vase was only $1 because I had the paint already. So talk about a cheap, easy DIY that's unique and creative. This is such a great one. Plus, I am theming it in my Christmas decor today, but it would be perfect throughout the rest of the year. I found a six pack of these twine covered ornaments at Walmart for $2.98 and I knew that these would be a great blank slate to customize in my blue and white theme. I also am going to use some ribbon. I have some white, gold, and blue ribbon. I have a few segments of garland and I also have some Dollar Tree tacks. For my first ornament, I'm simply going to make a bow out of that blue ribbon and then I'm going to place my tack through the knot in the ribbon. I'll get a little bit of that segment of garland, place it behind the ribbon, and poke everything into the top of the ornament. The second ornament, I'm going to get a segment of gold ribbon, wrap it around the center of the ornament, get a smaller piece of the blue ribbon, place it in the center of the gold ribbon, and attach it to the ornament with a tack. I'm also going to add a few more extra tacks for some extra embellishment. At the top, I have a white bow. Again, I'm going to press that tack through the center of the bow, through the garland, and into the top of the ornament. The third ornament has a blue ribbon that's wrapped around the center, followed by a white ribbon in the center, and then I added a lot of tacks to this one. I put them closer together than my second one, and I really love the embellishment and the sparkle that it adds to this ornament. And then to the top, I added a gold bow and a little bit of that segment and secured it to my ornament with a thumbtack. Again, these ornaments were so easy to embellish. Customizing ornaments is a great way to switch up your holiday decor and add something unique to your decorations. I placed two of these ornaments inside some Dollar Tree cloches, which turned them into more substantial and impressive design elements. It's free printable time, yay! I love free printables, and it's such an easy and cheap way to get a custom look for your design because typically all you need is some creativity and a printer. I created my Oh Holy Night sign and coordinated the coloring to enhance my blue and white color scheme. Now, if you want this sign right here, you can have it. I will leave a link in my description box below so you can print it off at home. So after I printed it off, I thought, you know, it's beautiful as is, but I'm gonna add a little bit of extra embellishment because I wanted it to coordinate with the gold in my color scheme. So what I did was I got on my Cricut Design Space and I found a pre-made design that was shaped similar to this particular star. So I created it to size and my Cricut maker cut it out onto some gold scrapbook paper. Then I removed the star from the mat and to adhere it to my sign, I added little dabs of hot glue to the back of the star and then placed it over the top of the existing star. I love the way that this extra gold star ties in the other gold elements on my display. If you don't wanna add an extra star, no problem. It's beautiful as is, so just skip this step. 
Once I was finished with my gold star, I added it to a Dollar Tree frame and placed it on a frame holder to give it extra height. The other design elements that I have on my blue and white display are a gorgeous blue, white, and gold ginger jar that I purchased at Home Goods, three faux fur cone Christmas trees that I created last Christmas, some additional gold ornaments, greenery, pine cones with white tips, and a beautiful bow on the top of my lantern. I enjoy creating and designing this non-traditional Christmas display. I think it creates a unique, classy, and elegant Christmas feeling. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make a Christmas tree cone that is made out of poster board. Now half of the trees I'm going to cover in faux fur and the other half I'm going to do with yarn. I'm gonna cover them in yarn and I'm gonna make some intricate designs that will make them look special and unique. Now, I don't know if you've been in the market for cone-shaped Christmas trees, but they can be expensive, like really expensive. So I thought, how hard could it really be to make my own? And guess what? It's so simple. All you need is a few pieces of poster board. I got mine from the Dollar Tree and they were only 50 cents a piece, so already that is a great start. Now I've seen a lot of different ways that people have made cones, but what works best for me is just to have a pattern because I want a long and slender tree. So I made a pattern and I placed it on top of my white poster board. I got a pencil and I traced out the pattern and then cut out the shape. Then I began to twist it all together. I started at the top and I tightly rolled it into a funnel shape. I kept rolling until I had a cone then I got some hot glue and I hot glued the seams together. After I was finished with that, I got a pair of scissors and I trimmed the bottom so it would be nice and even. Now I have three different heights on my trees. I have a 16 inch, an 18 inch, and a 24 inch, and I will leave all of the dimensions and the instructions in the description box below if you wanna check it out. Now it's time to make our trees pretty. The first example that we're gonna do is we're gonna use some yarn and make some designs on our cone. I got this yarn at Michael's. It was buy one, get one half off, and I love a good bargain. I'm gonna put some hot glue on the end of the yarn. I'm going to hot glue it to my cone, and then I'm going to wrap it around itself in a circular fashion until I have a circle. I'm gonna put a different amount around my cone. They're gonna be different sizes, and the variation is gonna make it look really unique and special. Now, the problem that I had with this yarn and this shelf is that it all blended together. I made them yesterday and I lived with it for a day and it was almost like they were invisible. So I had to come up with a solution. And what I did was I decided to spray paint them. So. I got some gold spray paint and I did a couple of coats. For my next design, I wanted my tree to look like a pine tree. So I decided to make some branches. Again, I hot glued the end of the yarn right onto the cone and then I looped it down in kind of an oblong oval shape, looped it right back up and then went down through it one more time and then I could just move right on to the next branch. I didn't have to cut it, it was seamless, and I also hot glued as I went along to make the branches. Once I got to the top, I took the excess yarn and I just wrapped it around a couple times, hot glued it together, and snipped off the excess. This tree also gets a few coats of spray paint. The final yarn design is the easiest and simplest of all. I just wrapped the yarn horizontally around the entire height of my tree. I just wrapped and wrapped and I hot glued as I went until I got to the top. 
I hot glued it all together, snipped off the excess, and then I had this beautiful tree. This tree also got a coat of spray paint along with the other two, and I also decided to add some embellishments on all three of my designs. I got some gold beads and I hot glued them at various places along my trees, in the circles, in some vacant spaces, just all over, just to give them a little extra embellishment and sparkle. And then at the top, every tree needs a topper, right? So my trees are getting some ornaments. Now I had some little holes at the top of the cones just naturally where the funnel came together. And so it was a perfect spot to put my ornament. I just hot glued a little line of hot glue around the bottom part of the ornament and I placed it right on top of my tree. My next design is so easy. All we're gonna do is wrap our cones in some faux fur. Now I already have this faux fur, but I've seen it at Joann's and Hobby Lobby and even at Walmart where you can buy it by the yard. So what I did was I got my segment of fur and I hot glued it to my cone. I just wrapped it around. I made sure all the seams lined up and I just hot glued it all together so it would stay on. And I liked it plain, but I thought a little embellishment might be nice. So I got a strand of beaded garland. Now I've seen these at Walmart and at the Dollar Tree. And what I did was again, I hot glued the bead straight on to the cone. And then I wrapped it two or three times around the tree. And then I hot glued the end to the cone directly so it would all stay in place. Now behind me I have an entertainment wall and on either side of the TV I have some shelves which are a great place to display my trees. I'm also going to add an extra garland, I'm going to add some ornaments, some berries, and a string of battery operated lights. I'm also going to add some of those gold magnolia seed pods that I made earlier in the fall and all of these things will just add to the festive feel of my trees. Now first off, I'm going to apologize for the raspy voice. We have had family in town all week for the Thanksgiving holiday. We ate some great food, we watched some fun movies, but we stayed up way too late and now I'm paying the price. But that's not going to stop me from showing you how to create a beautiful Christmas centerpiece out of lanterns that are filled with ornaments and a nativity. I love decorating with lanterns. They are so classy. I found these lanterns at Target last year. They're so pretty. They're neutral, black, so they'll go with all kinds of holidays and seasons. And I really like the size because you can fit a variety of things inside. So I thought that it would be a great idea to highlight my nativity by displaying it inside. The first thing that we're going to do is hang some ornaments from the top of the lantern. Now I got a different variety of gold ornaments, different sized and they have different textures on them. Some are shiny, some have glitter on it. And I got some fishing line. I love this stuff. What I did with it is I cut off a pretty decent sized segment and I threaded it through the top of the ornament and then I tied a knot. Now, after I was done with that part, I took the other end of the fishing line and I tied it to the top of the lantern. Tied another knot so it would be nice and secure, and then I snipped off the excess fishing line. I made sure that the ornaments were hanging at various different heights. That way it wasn't just straight across and it gave a lot more dimension to my lantern. To the bottom of my lanterns, I'm going to add some little wicker pieces. Now, if you don't have the little pieces like this, you could use some raffia or some shredded paper or even some cotton batting would be really nice. I like to add things to the bottom of the lantern 
That way there is a little more texture and it also makes the pieces that you're gonna put on top really stand out. Now my lanterns are prepped and ready for the nativity. Now this nativity is very special to me. I got it when I went on a trip to Guatemala. I went to go visit my parents who were serving a mission there. And while we were out shopping one day, I found this handcrafted nativity at one of the outdoor shops. It is obviously handmade with all of the little details. And I love the patina. It's almost like a bronze. And at the bottom, it has a more of a terracotta color. And I just really love it. My favorite piece is the palm tree, though. I think that there were palm trees at the first nativity. There were palm trees in Guatemala. And I have three palm trees in my front yard. So it ties all the locations together for me. Now it's time to create my centerpiece on my table. I'm going to start off with a tablecloth. On top of that, I'm going to add a DIY riser that I made and then a small piece of faux fur. I'm also going to add some segments of a garland, just a Dollar Tree garland that I cut into small segments. I'm going to add some ornaments. I'm gonna add some little berries and I'm gonna add some acorns. Once I'm finished adding all those things, I will put my lanterns on top of the riser. I'll start with the big one and then to the left of that, I'm gonna add my smaller one. And then it's time to add the rest of my nativity pieces. I'll put the wise man on one side, the shepherd on the other, and of course, don't forget that palm tree, it's my favorite. The final piece is to add a framed cross stitch that my mother did that says, unto us a child is born. Now that is the centerpiece to my tablescape because it is the reason that we celebrate this Christmas season. I'm gonna start off my design by hanging some snowflakes from the chandelier. I'm gonna do this first because if any glitter should fall, I don't want it to land on any plates. Nobody wants to eat glitter for dinner. I got this set of six resin snowflakes at Home Goods. They were $6.99, and the other gold snowflakes are from Walmart. I'm going to get some fishing line. You guys know how much I love this stuff. The reason why I love it so much is because you can hardly see it, and I want my snowflakes to look like they're just falling from the sky. So I'll take my fishing line and I will thread it through the hole that's in the ornament and then I'm going to tie a knot. I will snip off a piece of the fishing line, a pretty decent long segment, and then I'm going to tie it to my chandelier. And when I do this, I'm gonna make sure that the heights are varied. That way it looks a little more natural and they're not just straight across. Also, I want to make sure that they're not hanging so low that they're gonna hit one of your guests in the head or block the view from across the table. Now that my snowflakes are set, I'm going to put down a white tablecloth. This tablecloth has a beautiful design in it. It has almost like a pearl essence shimmer to it that looks like snow, which is perfect for my winter theme. To the center of my table, I'm going to add a faux fur runner. On top of the runner, I have two large candlesticks. I got these candlesticks from Tuesday morning several years ago, and they will add the perfect amount of height and drama to my table. It will also add the a beautiful warm glow from a candle. Between my large candlesticks and in the center of my table, I'm going to add a sleigh. I got this sleigh at Michael's last year and it fits in so nicely with my winter theme. 
It also will provide height to my table. I'm going to add some apothecary jars that are filled with ornaments that will add such a nice shimmer and sparkle to my table. I'm going to weave a garland around my candlesticks and sleigh and down the center of my runner. To this garland, I'm going to add some ornaments that match the ornaments that are in my apothecary jar. I'm going to add a variety of different colored poinsettias. I'll add some gold berries, and then I'm going to put some snowflakes that match the snowflakes that are hanging above. And the final thing that I'm going to add is some large pine cones that I got at at-home stores. They will be the perfect final touch. Now I'm going to add my dishware. I'm going to start with a gold charger. This is such a pretty charger. It has a lovely swirl design in it. It will be a great base for my table setting. And on top of that, I'm going to add a white plate. I got these white plates with a beautiful gold rim around them at the Dollar Tree. Can you believe the things they have there? Sometimes I am just so amazed. And they look beautiful on my table, mixed in with all the other high-end decor. The only downside to these plates is that you have to hand wash them. But since they're occasional plates and they're not everyday plates, it's not a big deal. And I'll do it every now and again. It's definitely worth it to get these plates. Next, I'm going to add a smaller appetizer plate to the center. This fits in perfectly with my white and gold color scheme, and I love the little polka dots on it because it reminds me of snow. Then I'll add a white napkin that's in a hammered gold napkin ring, and I will place it at an angle off to the side so that I have a space on my plate for my place card holder. For my place card holder, I'm simply using a pine cone. I love using pine cones. I use them for a gnome beard. I used them last week in my painted village display to decorate. And today I'm going to use some white tipped pine cones for my place card holders. There are a couple reasons why I like to use these. Number one is because of their cost. They're only $2.99. And the second is because they smell like cinnamon, which brings such a lovely aroma to the air. So what I'll do with these is I'll place them in the center of my plate and then I have a name. Now, I just used my computer and I printed off these name cards, cut them out, and I'm just gonna wiggle them in between the pine cones and they'll stay in place. If you are worried about them falling off, you could get a little bit of hot glue and glue it in place as well. The final step is to add my monogrammed silverware, a large water goblet, and then a crystal cut goblet as well. I am so happy with the way that my winter themed tablescape came out. From the garland filled with ornaments and different florals, to the pine cone place card holders, to the sleigh topped with apothecary jars filled with ornaments. My favorite part though is those snowflakes falling down from the chandelier. We're gonna start off today by making our gnomes. Now I've been trying to find unique materials to make our gnomes with, and I found these little pom-poms at Michael's. They were back in the yarn section. They were $2.99 a piece, but they were 40% off, and I love a good bargain, so I got both for under $4. Now since this pom-pom works for both the beard and the body, we can move straight into the hat. Now what I'm gonna use for the hat is this sock. Now if you remember, I used the matching sock 
for my wooden gnome and I had one left over and I figured it would be a great way to tie the gnomes together. But since this is long and our gnomes are short, we're gonna cut it in half. So once I cut it in half, I'm gonna take a piece of twine. I'm gonna wrap it around the top so the top is closed. And then I'm gonna shimmy it right onto the top of my pom-pom. And then I'm going to get some hot glue and I'm gonna glue the brim of the sock right on to the gnome and it's going to be a perfect little hat. Now to tie in my gnomes with the rest of the gnomes on my fireplace, I'm gonna use this pom-pom for the nose. I used it on all of my other ones. It's just a great option. And I got it at the Dollar Tree. Again, it came in a variety pack. I'm just using the white ones. I'll add a little dab of hot glue and then I'll place it right under the brim of the hat. And once the nose is in place, I'm gonna embellish the hat. I've got some ribbons. I have these little wooden stickers that I used as well. And then I also have this little mini ornament that I'm gonna tie on to the end of the hat. I folded the cut edge on the second half of my sock and hot glued it to my gnome. Then I added the nose, embellished the hat with a ribbon, snowflake sticker, and tied a mini ornament to the tip of the hat. Now that our gnomes are finished, it's time to create our wreath. I have this artificial pine wreath. It already has a few little holly berries on it. And to that, I'm going to add some battery operated star lights. I got these at an after 4th of July clearance sale at Target. They were only $1, stars for the 4th of July and stars for Christmas, who cares, they both work. So I'm going to wrap these around my wreath and then I'm going to secure the lights to the wreath with some floral wire. Now it's time to add my ribbons and my mesh. Now this is where you can get really creative with your design because you can pick colors and textures that go along with your home decor or with your Christmas theme. I've got some snowflake ribbons, some chevron red ribbons, and some red and gold mesh. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make some larger loops because I want some larger bows. I'm gonna loop them, I'll twist it, I'll make a loop again, and I'll do this with a few of the different ribbons. And then what I do when I'm done with the loops is I'm gonna take some floral wire, I'm going to wrap it around, and then I'm going to twist it together. Once all of the loops are done with the ribbons, I'm going to wiggle them all together. I'm gonna to get one more piece of wire. I'll wrap it around, twist it together, and to make one large bow. And then I'm gonna take that bow, and I'm going to attach it to my wreath using the same wire. I also added some ornaments to the center of my bow by wiring them together and then wiring them to the wreath. Next I'm going to add some Christmas floral picks. They've got some berries on it and some pine cones. I'm also going to add some gold poinsettias. I got all of these from the Dollar Tree. What I'm going to do is just poke them into the wreath and the wire will wrap around the wire that's on the wreath and it will stay securely in place. Now we're gonna add these snowflake ornaments that I got at the Dollar Tree, as well as just some more round red ornaments. I'm going to attach them with just plain ornament hooks and I think these are such great details to add to a wreath because it really makes it sparkle and shine and fills in any gaps that might be vacant. I wanted to display my gnomes in the most whimsical way possible, so I thought it would be fun to put them in these sleighs. My mother gave me these sleighs a while ago and I don't know where they're from. However, I have seen some sleds and some sleigh ornaments at the Dollar Tree and Michaels and Target and all over the place, so you could definitely use one of those. What I'm gonna do with these sleighs is I'm gonna place it on my wreath and I'm gonna poke one of the branches through the mesh I will bend the branch around the sleigh and that way it will stay in place. Then I'm gonna put my gnomes right inside and they're ready for a midnight sleigh ride with Santa. Now we're going to hang up my wreath. 
We're gonna do it in the opposite way that I usually like to do it. I like to work from the top down because I have dropped things before from the top and broken some things that were down below. But since my mantlescape is already set and ready, I do not wanna take it down because it would take so much time. So we're going to risk it and we're gonna put this wreath up. We're gonna take that painting down. So wish me luck. Are you as excited for Christmas this year as I am? I cannot wait for the holidays. I am so ready that I decided that I would make a Christmas countdown clock. The first thing that I needed to do was to find a piece of wood. I went to Lowe's and I found a two foot wide by two foot tall square piece of wood and it was only $4.16. What a bargain. So I began to stain this wood. I used a Minwax Antique Walnut Stain. I took a sponge brush and I painted the stain all over the surface of the wood. Afterwards, I took a paper towel and I wiped off the excess stain because it evens out the color variation so the stain is cohesive across the entire board. I let the stain dry for a couple of hours and then I flipped the board over and I painted the stain on the surface, wiped off the excess with a paper towel, and then let it dry completely. In the center of my countdown clock, I wanted to put a snowflake as a beautiful focal point. In my Cricut Design Space, I clicked on New Project, I clicked Image, and in the search bar, I typed in the word snowflake. A lot of options came up, I selected this snowflake right here and clicked insert image. At this point, I went to the top. I knew which size I needed, so I typed in the exact size and then moved it to the upper left-hand corner and then clicked make it. My image was sorted onto my mat. I pressed continue and the material I'm using is vinyl, so I selected vinyl and always on the pressure, I select more pressure. After I finished creating my design on my Cricut Design Space, I moved over to my Cricut Maker. The vinyl I'm using is a white Cricut vinyl. I took that vinyl, cut it, and placed it on my mat. At this point, I'm gonna hit the flashing arrow button, which is going to load my mat. Then I'm gonna hit the flashing C button, which will begin the cutting process. Once the cutting process was done, I hit that flashing arrow button, which released my mat. I went back to my computer and clicked finish. I used my scraper tool and I pressed the vinyl together. Then I got my weeding tool and pulled the vinyl away from the backing. Because there's a lot of intricate detail on my snowflake, I pulled up the vinyl slowly so I didn't rip it. Next, I took that weeding tool and I pulled out all of the little holes that were in between the snowflake to create the detail. I took my transfer tape and I placed it over the top of my vinyl snowflake. Then I got my scraper tool and I pressed them both firmly together. Next, I pulled the vinyl and the transfer tape up off of the backing, which stuck together really nicely. And then I took that snowflake and I put it on my wood. I found the center of the wood and I pressed the snowflake right into the center. I used my scraper tool to make sure that everything was firmly pressed onto the wood. Next, I peeled the transfer tape away from the vinyl and the snowflake was stuck beautifully to the center of the wood. How pretty is this snowflake? It's the perfect winter theme focal point for my sign. Now we're gonna move on to the lettering. I chose Christmas countdown, but you could get really creative. You could say the Jones family Christmas countdown. You could say the grandkids Christmas countdown. There's all kinds of things you could say. One nice thing about having a Cricut is that you can personalize those letters and theme to your specific taste. I selected new project on my Cricut design space. I went to text and I typed in the word Christmas. I changed the font to make it feel a little more Christmassy. I typed in the word aphasia because that's the font that I liked. 
and then I took my word and I took it to the upper left hand corner and then I sized it to the size that I wanted. Now I wanted to curve it as well. There is a drop down arrow and it has the word curved. I took that and I moved it and as I moved that little button it changed the curvature of my word. Once I was finished I typed in the word countdown then I moved that word right underneath the Christmas words. I also wanted to curve this so I went to the curve button. This time I went downward to make my word curve the opposite direction. Once I had my words created I clicked make it which sorted it onto my mat. I clicked continue then I selected my material which was vinyl and I pressed more on the pressure. My Cricut machine cut my lettering, I hit the flashing arrow which released my mat and then I hit finish on the computer. I pressed the vinyl firmly together with my scraper tool and then I got my weeding tool and I began to pull the vinyl away from the lettering. Again I did this slowly and methodically so that I didn't pull up any of the letters. I also used that little weeding tool to pull out any of the little circles. Next I took my transfer tape and I pressed it onto the top of my lettering. I got my scraper tool and I made sure that it was firmly pressed together. I peeled the vinyl and the transfer tape away from the backing and then I got a pair of scissors and I cut down the center so I could divide my two words because one was going to go above the snowflake and one is going to go below the snowflake. I pressed the Christmas vinyl word above the snowflake and then I got my scraper tool and pressed it firmly to the wood and then I removed the transfer tape. Next I took countdown and placed it below the snowflake and then I took my scraper tool and pressed it firmly onto the wood and then I removed the transfer tape. Now it's time for a little embellishment. The Dollar Tree has such a great variety of seasonal wood stickers. I selected this variety pack and I picked out the snowflakes and then I pulled the sticker off the back of each piece. I needed an accent color to my sign and since the color scheme this Christmas that I'm going for is a copper and gold, I decided that I would choose a gold spray paint. I chose this bright coat gold Rust-Oleum spray paint. I sprayed the front side of my snowflakes let them dry for 30 minutes, flip them over and spray painted the other side, and then I let them dry completely. Now I am all about symmetry. It drives me crazy when things are unbalanced or uneven. So I had to come up with an idea to keep all of these circular things even and well balanced. So the idea that I came up with was to use some twine. I took this twine and tied it around a tack. Then I pressed the tack into the direct center of my square 2x2 board. I placed my snowflake in the location I wanted, cut my twine where it touched the bottom of the snowflake. Now when I move my string around the board, each piece will be exactly the same distance away from the center. I'm attaching my snowflakes to the board with some Dollar Tree gold tacks. Again, they're super affordable. I measured out the distance I wanted the snowflakes to be apart, which was eight inches, and then I hammered them all into place. To create my circular shape, I simply took those Dollar Tree gold tacks and I hammered the tacks into place. Again, I used the twine and a measuring tape to get the exact location of each tack placement. I continued to hammer the tacks into the sign until each tack was in place and my circle was formed. Now that each of my tacks are in place and the snowflakes are on, it's time to create my numbers. I hit new project on my design space, I went over to text, and then I just typed in 1 through 25. I changed the font to the same aphasia that I used in my lettering and then I took my font and I moved it to the upper left hand corner and I sized it to the size I wanted. Then I clicked make it and then I pressed continue. I selected my material which again was vinyl and I hit more on the pressure. I hit that flashing arrow button on my Cricut Maker which loaded my mat and then I hit the flashing C button which began the cutting process. 
Once the cutting was complete, I hit that flashing arrow button, which released my mat, and then I went over to my computer and hit finish. I pressed my vinyl together with my scraper tool, and then I got my weeding tool, which held down the mat. Well, I peeled up the vinyl. I did this slowly and carefully so I didn't peel any of the numbers up off of the backing. Then I took my weeding tool and I peeled out any of those little circles in between the numbers. Then I put my transfer tape over the top of the numbers. I got my scraper tool and I pressed everything firmly together. And then I removed the vinyl and the transfer tape away from the mat. I cut each individual number out because they were going to be placed on my clock at a different location. Once I had all of my numbers, I peeled the backing up off of the numbers. I pressed the 25 at the very top underneath that snowflake. I got my scraper tool and I pressed it to the wood and then I removed the transfer tape leaving the number on my clock. I got my string and I put it to the bottom of the number and I got a pair of scissors and I trimmed it. So now I have a guide to keep each of my numbers the exact distance away from the center. I peeled the backing away from all of my numbers and pressed them onto my board using my scraper tool. I continued to move on until each one of my numbers were firmly placed on my clock. The last addition to my countdown clock is to add the hands. I found these clock hands at Walmart for only 98 cents. What a great deal. They were a little short for my clock, so I needed to add them together. I just got a little bit of hot glue and glued the two hands together to create one long hand. To attach my clock hands to my sign, I'm again using these trusty Dollar Tree tacks. I put it right into the hole that was on the clock hand and I hammered that tack right into place. And the tack held the hand in place beautifully. I was amazed at how well this worked. The hands were able to move around the clock smoothly. I wanted to be able to hang up my sign on this front porch plant stand that I've made in a previous video. If you're interested in how I did that, I'll leave a link to that video in the description box below. But in order to hang up my sign, I needed to place some hooks on my sign. I got some screw eyes and to attach them, I took my drill and I drilled a few pilot holes into the top of my sign. And then I easily twisted the screw eyes into the sign. I hung my sign to the plant stand with just some twine. This doesn't weigh very much, so I didn't need any heavy duty rope or anything like that. The twine worked really well. So I just threaded it through the screw eyes and right onto the plant stand and it hung nicely. If you wanted to, you could put some frame hooks on the back of your sign and hang it on the wall. You could also get a metal frame easel and place it on top of that and leave it on a tabletop or on a foyer table. I'm going to put mine on my plant stand because I wanted it to be low enough so that my little ones could easily turn the dial. To make this sign a stunner, I'm going to take this big thick garland and I'm going to drape it over the top of the plant stand. I also have some coordinating gold and copper ribbons, the same ribbon I used in two of my previous videos. The copper ribbon is from Michaels and the gold ribbon is from the Dollar Tree. I bought a whole bunch last year, so I would be prepared for this year. So that is my color scheme and I'm excited about it. I also have some poinsettias that are in cream and gold. I place those in the garland as well as a few gold berries. My family and I are ready to start celebrating for this blessed time of year. This classy countdown clock will be a perfect festive way to add some extra excitement to the season. It was so affordable to create this sign. It would be a great gift. You could personalize it and give it to loved ones. I thought it would be a fun detail to add a banner to my mantelscape and that was a great place to add in some gnomes. So what I did was I found a banner. I got it at Ross for like $2.99 back in the craft section. They have some great things back there. And they have some polka dots and some stripes and some plain gold ones on this banner. They also have just some plain triangular 
pieces of cardboard. Now I'm gonna use these as a form for my gnome because they worked so great last week, this triangular shape. Now if you can't find a banner that's in the shape of a triangle, you can just cut out some thick pieces of cardboard or cardstock. Now I searched for a while to try and come up with a unique and creative idea for the beard. So when I was at the Dollar Tree, I found these slippers. Now you might be thinking, what is she talking about slippers for a beard, but stick with me. These are flimsy enough that you can flip them inside out. And when you do it on the inside, it has this fuzzy, soft textured material that is going to be perfect for the beard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it in half and it has a natural pocket for where the foot should be. And so it's easy to slip my triangular form right into that pocket. And once it's in there, I'm going to get some hot glue and I'm going to hot glue the slipper right on to my cardboard form. Now that my beard is on, I'm going to put on the hat. Now I'm going to do two versions. The first one is the hat that's made out of felt. As you can see, isn't that so cute? Now I got this felt at Walmart. It was like 30 or 40 cents. It was super affordable. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace out a triangle. I'm going to cut it out and then I'm going to wrap it around the point of my triangle and hot glue it all together. Now there are a few things that I'm using this week that I used to create my gnomes last week. The first one is this little pom-pom. It came in a variety pack and I'm going to use it for the nose. I'll just add a dab of hot glue to it and I'll tuck it right underneath the brim of the hat. The second thing that I'm going to use is this looped yarn. I love this looped yarn so I had to use it again and I also love a gnome with a mustache. So I'm going to cut out a segment of this yarn and I'm just going to hot glue it right under the nose to make a cute little mustache. To add a little extra holiday flair, I'm going to wrap a chevron ribbon around the center of the hat. And then in the middle of that, I'm going to put a wooden sticker. This is a little present. I also use these stickers that I got from the Dollar Tree on my gnomes last week. There's some presents, some stars, some snowflakes, some trees, all kinds of things. I'm going to hot glue this onto the ribbon. And then at the very top, I'm going to add a little teeny pom pom for a little extra embellishment. For the second version of my hat, I'm going to use a sock. Now I got this festive Christmas sock at Target. It was only $1, which is the perfect price. And what I'm going to do is pull it over the point of my triangle. I'll just wiggle it down until it's right above the beard. And then I will hot glue everything together. And then just like the other one, I will add the nose. I will add the mustache. And then I will put some really festive ribbons and I'll add another wooden sticker and it's gonna be so cute. Now that my gnomes are finished and they were made on a banner, we're gonna put that banner on this banner. Now this banner is just a felt banner. It's plain green. I got it at Target, it was $3. And what I did was I cut out some letters that say Mary and I'm going to put them in the center of my banner and I'm going to do it using some double-sided tape. That way it's not a permanent thing. I can take the letters off and I can use the banner for another party or event later on. Now it's time to assemble our fireplace decor. The first thing that I did was I put some Christmas lights down on top of the mantle. Then I covered those lights up with some cotton batting that looks like snow. I added some Christmas presents and then I put some Christmas ornaments and then of course I had to add our DIY Christmas gnomes that we made last week. They are the centerpiece and I just love these little guys. Then on either side of the fireplace. I'm going to put these white lanterns. These are so pretty. I filled them up with ornaments and I put a battery operated candle in it. And then at the top, I just tied some ribbons and I put a garland on it. And in the center, I put some more Christmas ornaments that tie everything all together.
Now it's time to add my Mary banner to my fireplace. I'm just gonna tie it to either side of the mantle and then I'm gonna add my gnomes. Now I'm gonna get a Christmas ornament hook. I'm gonna hook it right through the back part of the hat and then I'm going to bend the other side of the ornament hook onto the twine that is on my banner. That way it's really secure and it can hang in between my letters and it's gonna look fantastic.